Okay, with the recent embarrassment that Jamie Ben bestowed upon himself. It's Ben Stick that ends up catching himself and then and catches Eric Sinek. So X check causes Ben to hit himself in the face. He does a ballerina move to smack Eck in the face? Like what? So pathetic. And of course, Eck would receive a hit to the head penalty. So with that, let's take a look at some of the dumbest, most confusing missed calls in NHL history. We are on the road to 100k, a goal I've been striving for since I was 10 years old. And I would really appreciate your support. Look at this guy. Now look at my dogs. You guys have been asking for it. <laughs> Static. In February 2021, we would see what has to be the most bizarre missed call in the history of the game. Because after a questionable entry from the Canes, they would cycle the puck and end up scoring. Eshi with a shot, rebound, scores! However, Trocek was clearly offside. Thus, John Tortorella would challenge the play. And after a video review, the NHL and officials would rule it a good goal. Let's take another look, Trocek was clearly offside. But because it was a good goal, the Blue Jackets would receive a penalty. But hold up, it gets better. During the intermission, Torts and the officials would have a heated discussion, where we would see a rare event as the officials would realize that Torts was right, and it was in fact offside. And get this. Replay that we got to see, which shows offside by Trocek. The goal, the goal stands, the power play comes off the board. The following period, they would allow the Hurricanes to keep the offside goal, and to make up for it, they would remove the 40 seconds of the Hurricanes power play time. So to summarize, they would acknowledge that they were wrong, yet the Hurricanes kept their goal. They would win this game by a single goal. And thank you to Estella Gringen, hopefully I pronounced that right for the suggestion, this one was bizarre. Yet, it doesn't even come close, doesn't even sniff what we saw in a Hawks-Jets matchup back in the 90s. Because after the game would go scoreless through three periods, we would see overtime. And on this play, the Jets would dump the puck in, where Ed Belfour would attempt to rim the puck out of the zone. Where, my God, the incident would happen. Belfour clears it around the boards and hit a Jet player, went in the oh. net. Oh, that can't be a goal. That did not go that in. That came out of his glove, I that thought. That did not go in. The Jets think they've won the game. Dennis Morrell singled for a goal. As Nelson Emerson would grab the puck out of midair, he would then proceed to skate towards the net, hilariously absorb a check from Belfour, wrap his arm around the net, throw the puck into the net, where Emerson would score the OT winner. Like, come on! Look at the confidence from this ref. Is this not one of the most ridiculous things you have ever seen in the sport? But it's okay. The officials would do an uncommon video review, where they would of course easily see that the puck was thrown in. Psych! Well, Dennis Morrell is off the phone. Now he's talking with the representative. Oh, oh, he's giving him a goal! There's absolutely, this, is the, this is highway robbery. Oh, Absolute there comes joke. Daryl Sutter across Absolute the ice. Joke. There's no way. Morrell made the call, said it was a goal, but there's no way. That's Somebody, not a goal. Daryl Sutter getting in Morrell's this face This is unbelievable. Now. And he is being surrounded by no Hawks way. players on the ice. No way. They would say it was a good goal. I don't know if technology just wasn't good enough in the 90s. I mean, you could see it from any angle. How in the hell did the NHL miss this one? His hand on the puck. Look He's got it in his hand for a couple of seconds. As he comes toward the near post, Belfort yeah. gets in his way. The puck's still in his glove. And he throws Lost it, it into the goal crease. And it still doesn't look like it ever crossed the line. Back in 2020, we would see one of the most hilarious cases of too many men in the game's history. Because after a dump and chase, the Penguins taking their time on a line change would set an NHL record. As they would be caught, and I mean, let's just count it ourselves with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of their players on the ice. Like, are you kidding me? Thankfully, though, the refs would catch it. But what if I were to tell you that the Penguins had a miss too many men call? That would lead to a Stanley Cup. Because back in 2008, the Detroit Red Wings would decisively shut down a 21-year-old Sidney Crosby in the Cup Finals. And in 2009, we would see a Stanley Cup Finals rematch. And in Game 3, it would happen. Pittsburgh has too many men on the ice. A goalie in six. I can't believe Detroit doesn't know this. They got too many men on the ice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six guys on the ice. Somehow, no official or even the Detroit bench would notice that the Penguins had six men on the ice in the offensive zone. As the Penguins would go unnoticed for over 20 seconds, the Penguins would finally realize get the man off the ice, and instead of being on the penalty kill, 
They would call a holding penalty on Dan Cleary. And on the ensuing power play, Chris Letang would score. It's Letang just away from the reach of Franz and a shot score! So instead of being on the power play, the Wings went on the penalty kill and lost the game. And keep in mind, this is the Stanley Cup Finals, and this series would end up going to 7 games. This pivotal missed call could have been the difference between winning back-to-back -back cups and being sent home packing. Back in the 2021 playoffs, we would see a Vegas-Montreal Finals. And in this series, we would see two of the most brutal missed calls in playoff history. In Game 3, the Canadians were on the power play. Nick Suzuki would win an offensive zone faceoff. Toffoli would cycle the puck behind the net to Perry, where Perry would feed Nick Suzuki a beautiful pass. And after taking the shot and breaking his stick... Sorry, of Suzuki and now he and McNabb go one off. Hayden McNabb would proceed to punch Suzuki in the head. Not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. The last one being directly to the face, right in front of the ref. And right as it happened, you can see the ref look in the other direction. Like what? He would then look back over and proceed to shake his head stating, No. That's not a penalty. From all the borderline penalties we see in the regular season and playoffs, how in the hell is a defenseman punching a player four times in the head not, not one of them? How is this a hockey play? Like, look at this iconic picture. You can't make this stuff up. But somehow, it gets worse. Much, much worse. Because the game before, during a puck battle, Jonathan Margeso would decide to bat a puck in the middle of a crowd of players. Not only did he come nowhere close to making contact with the puck. We're talking about just miss. Look at Margeso. He's swinging at the puck and instead misses the puck and catches Perry right in the nose with it. But he would hit Corey Perry directly in the face. Again, the official was watching the scrum right beside them where it happened. Where is every official looking? Like, some high stakes I get are subtle, under the radar, but Marchessault's swat to Perry's face was a blatant baseball swing. Also YouTube, everyone in this video was fine. The person who just got hit was fine. Please don't demonetize me. But man, this series was rough. With that being said, the Habs would get good karma as they would win this series in six. Next, we're gonna take a look at the notorious Ryan Klo incident. Because in game 80, the 2011-2012 season, both the Sharks and the Kings were on the cusp of being eliminated from playoff contention. As they were in a four-man race, battling for the final two spots in the Western Conference. And in Game 81, we would see an intense back and forth matchup. And late into the third period, the San Jose Sharks would hold on to a 5-4 lead, but they would put LA on a 5-on-3 power play, where Mr. Game 7, Justin Williams, would tie the game. Back to him then, Logan scores! And shortly after, still on the power play, we would see another incident. Gets it up ahead to Stoll. Stoll to center. Oh, oh! Someone on the bench played the puck. Someone's got to pick it up. Oh! A San Jose Shark player on the bench reached onto the ice and touched the puck. Because I kid you not, as the Kings were breaking the puck into the zone, Ryan Klo would reach over the boards while he was on the bench and strip Jared Stoll of the puck, which would go unnoticed by the officials. As a result, he would break up the play, where San Jose would eventually win. But here's the thing, the LA Kings this season were the last team in the West to make the playoffs. And if it wasn't for the Dallas Stars losing their last five games of the season, the LA Kings would not have made the playoffs. And what's crazy is that in this postseason, the Kings would go on to having one of the most dominant playoff performances in NHL history. No series was even close, as they would even sweep the Blues in round two. And to think that Ryan Klo disrupting a power play from the bench could have had serious consequences is crazy. Next, we have one of the goofiest calls I have ever seen. Because in a Wings-Cavs matchup back in 2014, the Detroit Red Wings would dump the puck into the zone. Glenn Denning would barrel down the ice to block Holpe's rim attempt, where Holpe would smartly fake a pass and go to his backhand. And while Holpe was going back to his net, this would happen. Braden Holpe would eat it. And as a result, the Wings would score a goal. Except... Glenn Denning would be called for goaltender interference, where the goal would get waved off, and the Capitals would go on a power play. And with that, what missed call or non-call can you think of? Comment down below. The Connor McDavid packs are still in stock, where you are chasing various McDavid rookies, or perhaps an auto. If you like hockey cards, or maybe want to start your collection with a guaranteed McDavid card, check out the link down below. 
My goal with these packs is to remove the gambling factor by providing guaranteed value in every pack with the upside of pulling some monster cards. And as always, thanks for watching.